You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. And welcome to this week's edition of Hanging with the Haters. This is Wednesday, May the 31st of June. Summer is starting. Yeah, summer's summer, yeah. First it will start, Kay. But right now, uh, we're still on the cusp of it. And by the way, today being our last show, and I did Facebook that, Bradley. Did you get the Facebook? Uh, I did. You did? Okay. Uh, and I, I'm uh, speaking here to Brad Meyer. Uh, a um, He has been an integral, integral. Yeah. Is that right? Part Integral, of the show. That means from Lebanon? Yes, he's that's, been from a Lebanese. Uh, yes, he's been, uh, oh, man, so powerful. He's been on practically every show unless he's got a meeting or something important to do. Uh, but you haven't recognized him in so many ways. But what we're going to do, Brad, I'm surprising you here, is we're going to have all of the characters that have been on this show uh, thanks to you. I mean, you've recommended these people to us, and they're going to drop by. Uh, not all of them, but as many as we could get in touch with uh, today. So. Well, they, like me, are, are just surprised you've lasted this long without I, being thrown off is, the air. So. Kay, how long have we lasted? I would ask uh, Jake, but he hadn't been here that it long. It is, let's see, seems like it was a year last January. But you were on the Cindy Cochran show, too, before that, I was that, on right? Cindy Cochran. Yeah. In fact, well, it, Jake, was, it was the Mark and Cindy show. It was the Mark and Cindy. And, and before that, there was the Brad, Brad and Mark, and Mark show. show. You know, you're part of a series of, of failed a broadcasts. Failed, failed <laughs> <laughs> I think it there's a up. pattern developing it here. It is. One and bad decision after another. Yeah. That's what it looks and, like to me. And this one, though, is really uh, our doing. We're moving uh, to uh, Washington State. It's a visit. It's a five-month or more visit, uh, maybe six months tops. Is Voila. this part of a witness protection program? Pretty much so, but I'm just giving it away, Washington <laughs> State. But really, you know, we, it's it, a could, big state. it could be Belize. We you, do not know. You could be hiding out. Yeah, we are. We, yeah, we're going to try to fly under the radar. No. My, yeah. my uh, dear sister and uh, niece, uh, Rhonda Steele, and, of course, Susan Hader, uh, Susan Meller is our sister. She's, um, yeah. She's Mark's sister, but she's yeah. my sister. We're going to live in her vacated home in uh, Grandview. Uh, we're going to have neighbors of uh, my niece, uh, Rhonda, and, and Kurt. Yeah, and a whole bunch of great, bunch great of nieces people. and nephews. It's on a farm. It's a 30-acre farm, and we're going to stay there while our home is being built here, Brad. So we will be back uh, to grace the uh, – well, I don't even know what that means, Kay, but we will be here. And my article, unless they boot my buns, and if they do, folks, please write in and yell. But I haven't talked to Sandra yet, my boss, and uh, – but we, I do plan to write. It'll just be a different location and probably be uh, on the rooftop in Washington State on a ranch. Yeah, but a, you haven't found the farm. appropriate roof yet, have you? Do you think Susan's roof will do? I think Susan's do? roof will take it. I okay. don't know if she's got a ladder, but we'll figure it out. But, folks, that's the deal. And uh, we just uh, wanted to have a farewell. And I, I, while I Facebooked it and all, this may be a surprise to several people like my family and all. They, uh, <laughs> I think have, we've told you know, just about everybody. We have. We're in good shape. But, anyway, that's what's happening um, and everything's still in the air. We don't have a definite, but Brad, it's uh, June. You keep trying to get me to say January, but it's June. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brad. It's June the 15th that we're supposed to close, and we got to be out of that house. So from now till then, boxing yeah. and... If you see us, we'll be hot and sweaty. Yeah, sweaty. And uh, it will, it's uh, by boxing, I'm not talking about, you know, Brad used to be a referee, most of y'all know a boxing referee, and all, and we've got over here um, uh, Chuck Walker, who was an Olympic boxer, professional boxer also, and uh, he's not on the show today, but he's just next door, and, but I'm not talking about boxing, Brad, I'm talking about putting stuff in boxes, and it's been a, a heck of a job. I am getting very unsentimental, you know, we're, we're going to have to box this stuff, put it in storage. Married to Mark, that's not, that's leave, not surprising. Leave it there. Yeah, been, yeah. There, I'm getting there, rid of a ton of There stuff. was a time, but, uh, yeah. You know, it's stuff like, Brad, we've been saving bottles, jars, like mason jars. they got the special lids because you never know. And well, so we're moving spaghetti up. Spaghetti sauce comes in. Spaghetti sauce, Kay. Yeah, it's love good. it. And she, you know, weird bottles, and I've been saving them because they look really good, Brad. And, yes, uh, listeners are going to sleep, but... Uh, when I was wake up, Brad. You know, get, I said, "Katie, you want to save this?" You know, I had an old cabinet full of them. Said, "Throw them, get rid of them." And so I started boxing them up, and lo and behold, uh, the church is having some kind of uh, a 
deal where they need a bunch of jars. So we're Quart jars. Sure. So yeah, um, they're getting them anyway. Uh, yes, and uh, so right now, though, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we do anything, oh, <laughs> hey, oh, hey there, Mark Wayne, thank you, old scutterbug. Oh, buddy, uh, I had to come by and uh, say goodbye to you officially. You know, I, I, I'd like to stay a little bit longer, but I think I got to go to the sheriff's office. Again? What oh, the Sam Hill waiting? I went. I went for my 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 semi annual medical exam this morning, and got me one of them uh, pro state exams. <laughs> I, I, I have never, had one of those. I've never had anything like that, that happen to me, and I think I'm going to be filing filing charges against that doctor. I, pro state. I, that is just not something I enjoyed. Is, yeah. Uh, 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 Bradford. It's uh, these I, doctors don't yeah. explain Bradford. Anything? Who's Bradford? I am. Oh, I'm sorry, Bradford. Just <laughs> I get you mixed up sometimes. Wayman, uh, Wayman, I am so sorry, but uh, that is uh, prostate, and you should have known going in that it was going to be an intricate uh, procedure there. Oh, intricate or intimate? Um, both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you were going to well, bring charges at the sheriff's Well, department? I'm I'm thinking about it, but Kay seems to know about it, so I think I'm going to ask her what she thinks about that prostate uh, uh, exam. Uh, I've never, you, I've never had one. Well, then why do I need one? Well, That's Brad, what I want to know. Brad, it's... it's no, I, who is that Brad? You I keep can't, talking. You know, you're going to have to put something over your head. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Let me, tell you, let me tell you, buddy. It's something that all men... Like, Jake's too young, but boy, when you hit uh, past your 50s, it's something they got to do. But, wait. speaking of butts... Uh, mostly it's just a blood test. They, they take your, in fact, they did. There was a lot more than blood well, involved was, in this test. One of those You things. know, he, he put his finger on my pulse. And, well, yeah, in a place that you didn't know you had. Blood. I did not know that. That is, uh. I ain't never been to no medical school. You know, did the snapping of the gloves, did that have any effect? It normally sends me into. I, a, I'm not sense. entirely sure he wore gloves. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. He, he seemed very friendly. Wait a minute, that's that all is, I know. I'm sorry about that, but really, and I, you know, you do what you want to do. You always do, but well, uh, I, I would not, I would not press charges because this is something that normally happens. Well, to I, I'll have to ponder it, but I got to go talk to the sheriff's department, so I'll be seeing you. you okay. Good, good luck out west. You Thanks, know, buddy. One last word, Wayman. Yes. When your mama said, uh, "It's it's for your own good." Yeah. That's what she's talking about. Yeah. A prostate exam? A prostate Apparently exam. So. I'm, I'm not sure it was for my good. And, you know, <laughs> the only way it can do good, sometimes if your pr- prostate is uh, swollen, they will do the massage. I don't know if they did that to you, but it'll uh, bring that, you screams where you didn't know. That sounds like we're crossing the border. It's we too are. Much we are. Too much personal information. Anyway, Wayman, yeah, thanks so much for dropping by. Yeah, uh, y'all have a good time. See you out west. Now. Way, Bye. Yeah, Bye, well, Wayman. Brad, I tell you this. Whoa. You didn't say a word to this guy. I, I, you know, I'm just sat here in awe. He's, I know. He's quite the orator. He is the orator, and you introduced us. In fact, I never met him for, uh, heck, it took me about four months before I ever met the guy uh, out in Cut and Shoot. Uh, yeah. we, we've what? only actually seen him in person a couple of times. He seems very genuine. Oh, he is. By the way, uh, I don't know if how many know and or... I don't know if anybody cares, but what we did, Kay and I, is we actually tried to make a little money, this being our last show, and our uh, our sponsor, uh, Sonny Horn, we're leaving, and so he's not going to be our sponsor because we're not going to have a sponsor. So what I did, Brad, is over the last week, I tried to get as many one-day, one-week sponsors as I could, and I developed several. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, if it's okay with you, Jake, I'm going to go ahead and give a sponsor uh, commercial right now. Jake doesn't give a right to him. So uh, here's one I got, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's from Arnold's Pitbull Grooming and Etiquette Training, or the APBGET. Sessions include eyebrow plucking, pedicure, underarm waxing, and ear tattoos for your pit bull. Plus, with regards to etiquette, teach them how to chew with their mouths shut, how to attack without first barking, and when it's okay to remove your chain in public, and teach them the art of defecating without walking in a circle first. Brad, this takes, that is, from what I understand, the, the toughest things. Folks, that is Arnold's Pit Bull Grooming and Etiquette Training. It's there located on 105 East at Avenue 3. I people, didn't even know we had People love three. their dogs. Oh, they do. Woo, woo. Pitbull, and you know, Kay, you tell me that, that was, uh, that Pit Bulls get a bad rap, that they're really. Uh, yeah, it's the owners. The owners. It's the owners. Bad. Yeah. 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 But, and, and I didn't want to tell this to. You got to be, you got to be the, 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 you know, the pack leader. Yeah. The dog shouldn't make any decisions. Exactly. You make you get form. that dog straight. And, uh, you know, and the, the fear is, 
It's their potential. It's like me, Brad. You may be packing iron right now. I do not know. But when I see a gun on a person, it's a, it, it uh, gives me a, a respect that is a scary respect. Same thing with pit bulls. Oh, he's nice, and I can pet him. But when you look, there's potential for something to happen right. there. Right, and they can be very dangerous. They have not yeah. been socialized, properly trained. Yeah. Anyway, Arnold paid me a, a little bit of money for that, so okay, we're, we get to take some of that to abortion. Thank you, Arnold. Arnold Pitbull training. That'll get us a Whataburger on the way. Oh, it will. So much stuff is going on, so many uh, local news stories. Today is... Uh, in the Courier, they have the uh, May the uh, 30th, 31st, uh, in 1917. The war was getting ready to start World War One, and they have fascinating things. You need to look at that. But right now, what you need to do, Brad? The war started in 1914. America well, got there in, in 1917. That's what I was in reference to. It started here, and that's why they put in the... Uh, it, it never came here. No, no, no. It was a world war. You're right, but it never came to Montgomery County. Brad, you know, sometimes you make me so happy I'm leaving. But uh, right now, we have got to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. His job First is done. Break. <laughs> uh, and we'll be back in a couple. I this is a away. legitimate uh, commercial. <laughs> and, uh, okay. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Hi friends, this is Jack Smiley from Jack Smiley Real Estate with a brand new concept in home real estate. Everybody knows about people who buy ugly houses. That's not what we do. We buy ugly people's houses. <laughs> Mark's got away, but we're looking for more in the area. And just remember, just because you're not cute doesn't mean you can't give your house the boot. Jack Smiley Real Estate. Give us a call. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Smiley came in uh, uh, yesterday to tape that, and I really had it all wrong. I thought it was <laughs> ugly houses. Kate, but he buys ugly people's houses. I uh, There's geez, a market for that. There I'm is sure. a market, and I should have taken advantage of this man because I, I stood a chance there. But we're, we're doing okay, I think. Heck, I don't know. Uh, by the way, did y'all see on the news where – there are people who are uh, getting into uh, what you call your virusing people's. What do you call it when somebody gets into your computer? Hack. Thank you so much. Hacking. Hacking computers when people are selling their homes. They somehow or other get wind of who, you know, it's very easy to do. Get on Zillow or wherever and find out who's selling a home. And right before the deal, folks, there's money transferred from the mortgage company yeah, to they want wire transfer somebody's now. bank or somebody's whatever. Right into your whatever, and uh, yeah, women's. Well, movies. apparently they're hacking the like the real estate broker's account, whatever they use, you know, to do that sort of thing. And so it looks like it's a legitimate email when the seller gets the information, and then they wire money to the wrong spot. Right, and they come and folks when they do that. Uh, I don't know how you get your money back. You know, with a credit card, hey, yeah, we'll take care of that. Or with some banks, you know, we're insured for $150,000, whatever. Uh, so does this mean you may not be coming back from Washington? Well, that, it means, yeah, that's true. This would be where we <laughs> this is where we would live. Jake so was giving it up, crossing his fingers. My like, fingers oh, are crossed. Uh, yeah, Ra that, Brad and I are both. I, I, hope we got, <laughs> I hope we don't have to finish. By the way, a Cindy Cochran show yesterday, and I didn't even see it. I had her grandkids on, and it was so good. And I don't know if Cindy knows this or not, but from the Mark and Cindy show, I still have access to the Facebook account. And I haven't, you know, I don't, I keep getting, if she gets a, a comment on her Facebook, I get it. So I went ahead and Facebook that this is our last show on her deal, and it looks like Cindy did it. Uh, Cindy, if you're listening, and I don't know why you would, but uh, I appreciate you letting me do that, which uh, I didn't tell you about it ahead of time. But uh, it was just my way of saying, hey, old, for old time's sake. But, uh. Anyway, I need to catch the uh, taped the YouTube of the, uh, little little Cindy. I love her dearly, and of course Samuel, uh, the the child, just like a, a son to me, just like a grandson to me. Great, and I'm sure the show went very well. And there's a little smart uh, car out there. Speaking of cars, Jake and Brad and Kay, 
We came down 105 from around Lake Conroe all the way down in traffic. It wasn't mentioned around spring. It was mentioned, but traffic in Conroe. No, he said that. Did you? Yes. That's because I wasn't listening. I was listening. Thank yeah. you, Kay. At least yeah. somebody You're listens welcome. to my weather and traffic. It's better than 2854, too. Oh, was it really? people trying to go another way and then it gets well, back up there? Well, they're street naming uh, oh. on 2854, close to 336 loop where it crosses. So there's yeah. traffic is backed up there as well, but not nearly as bad as Sergeant Ed Holcomb in 105. Yeah, that was oh, they, okay. they picked this yeah, day and this where... time around lunchtime to cut a bunch of tree limbs or something. They had the lane blocked and stuff is happening. But well, you know, it noontime in Conroe now. I mean, it, there's a lot of traffic, so you put any little any little something else in there to slow it down, and it gets bad fast. It really does. You know, one thing that gets bad fast, ladies and gentlemen, also is uh, haggis. Uh, that is a uh, I don't know, a delicacy. Uh, Why would delicacy. you bring up haggis? Because uh, Kay, haggis, thank you, sweet pea. <laughs> you see, Kay doesn't slap me like uh, Brad uh, and uh, uh, Jake do, but she... My job is to make you look good, baby. Look, <laughs> what a tough job, job it lady. is. <laughs> but no, haggis is uh, uh, comes from Scotland, and Scotland is the uh, our country today we're going to talk about. And it's kind of weird. I see a trend. I, once I mentioned we were going to do turkey, and I decided not to, uh, just because I, I was interested in the trend I had. I first had Iceland, which I thought was fascinating. And then I mentioned something about we had Pakistan uh, next, but also mentioned something. Bradley, stop. Oh, sorry. <sighs> oh, this man. Uh, I Get mentioned something some about the uh, two uh, countries that have no uh, mosquitoes, and that is Iceland and uh, the Faroe Islands, which are located between Iceland and Scotland. And then I just said, why don't we do Scotland now? So, ladies and gentlemen, Scotland. You know, when you think of Scotland, you think of uh, it's being just, you know, a part of... Uh, Great Britain. Great Britain, the British Isles. And they're wrestling with that at, since the British... Uh, since uh, the Britain got out of yeah. the, um, the Euro uh, community, they are now... Uh, Scotland's now thinking, well, we ought to just get out of, uh, you know, Great Britain and just they want us, country. They want us to cede... Yeah, but here's some things, interesting facts about Scotland. Scotland has, and I did not know this, 400, um, 700, I get them mixed up, they're so close together, 790 islands, and some of these islands include, of course, the Shetland Islands, the Orkney Islands, and the Hebrides, uh, but they got a, a bunch Sometimes of Sometimes called the Hebrides, I think. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's sweet pea. They are called the Hebr – what do you call the uh, – over there where Papua New Guinea is, the celebs, C-E-L-E-B-I-E-S. -E -E you know this one, Jake. Uh, I don't know this It's the celebs. <laughs> anyway, but this is – they've got all – Bradley, I Sorry. can send you out of this room, young man. I don't have to put up with this. This will interest you. For centuries, whiskey has been the national drink oh. in Scotland. They've got a national drink. Oh, hey. It ranks among the finest in the uh, whiskeys in the world, and you knew that. The official animal of Scotland. I didn't know this. Kiwi. Right. The unicorn. Uh, the unicorn is the – and see – The only the only nation on the planet that has an imaginary, an imaginary animal. Yeah. This uh, is interesting. Exactly. Uh, Texas official tree is the uh, shotgun. Uh, that's kind of unusual. Uh, I made that up too. Uh, the oldest surviving bank in the world, the Bank of Scotland. It started in 1695. Same banks there. In fact, they got the same teller. Uh, this guy is something else. Uh, the first city in the world to have a fire department, a fire brigade, was Edinburgh, Scotland, way back when. That's because their national drink is whiskey. It's whiskey. <laughs> they, they, these guys will come out of a bar or a pub or whatever they call them. Anyway, uh, you know, of all the names in Scotland, the ninth Scotland? most common. Yeah, this is last name. The, the ninth most uh, common is Scott. Scott, with two T's, Scott. But the top three are, and this is something I didn't imagine. Uh, well, I imagined it, but who gives a rat's? Uh, Smith, Brown, and Wilson are the three most common names in Scotland, mm. and that mm. just goes against everything I uh, think of when I think of Scotland. You'd think it'd be something starting with Mac, yep. wouldn't you? Kay, you mentioned haggis, sometimes called haggis. Uh, uh, what's it made of, do you remember? Well, they take a sheep's stomach, and then they take out, you know, like the liver, the heart, and the lungs, and then they... They mince it and they they uh, put it together with some other spices and they even put some oatmeal in there and they stick it in that stomach and then they boil it. Yum, yum, oh, yum, it could, yum, yeah. yum. 
You know, uh, normally Brad would be snoring if I was saying that kind of crap uh, stuff. But anyway, that is oh, that's haggis, and they apparently do you eat haggis twice a day, Brad? Do so not. that's why I'm so sick of it. Have you ever had it? Oh no, I no. Jay? I, I've seen it. Yes, I've, I've had haggis. My, my grandmother is from Scotland, and she was born there, and she yeah, she loves it. Holy, oh, she she cooks it herself. She did. Yeah. yeah. So you, I, I've, I've had it before. It's not bad. Where do you get a sheep's stomach to stuff with oatmeal? That's what I want to know. Uh, you get it? I think from a sheep. I could be wrong. It's butcher's uh, market. I mean, you can. Yeah, the you sheep's can, dead. By you the way. can find them. Oh, oh okay. The sheep's yeah. dead. Right. Okay. Well, that makes that makes a lot of difference. Because if you got to chase it down, you know, no, no, not going to be happy about. Well, you know, it. I don't understand the whole thing, Jake. Uh, you know, in Great Britain, there's not that many British restaurants that open around here because, you know, they eat kidney pie and stuff like When they say pie, you think, we think pie. Mm, pie. Holy cow. Uh, and it is holy. It's cow stuff. and they, they eat I've never the had very, kidney pie, but. Man, I cannot imagine. But that's when. I got a good one for you. Those Orkney Islands you were talking mm-hmm. about. So the world's shortest flight is a mile and a half. And it is from the West Ray and Papa West Ray Islands. So from West Ray Island to the Papa West Ray Islands, which is a part of the Orkney Island chain, it's the shortest flight in the world, mile and a half long. You know, my guess on this one is we have that the coast and <laughs> all is so uh, steep and all that there's no way a boat is going to you know, land you there. It's got to be by plane, I guess. Fascinating, hmm. Brad. Fascinating. You have to, you have to See be a the pilot stuff to live you've been there. missing out on. Uh, okay, in Scotland, Glasgow uh, is the only. Uh, city that's got a subway in it. I was going to leave that out because I don't care. I, I do have one question about Scotland. Let's hear it. Do, do they have gentlemen's clubs there? I doubt it because they wear, you know, skirts without underwear. Kilts? Yeah. Oh, kilts, yeah. Okay. I'm just, just guessing. Uh, I, Jake's mom lives there. Um, uh, grandmother. Grandmother. I knew that too. <laughs> okay. The official religion in Scotland is Christianity, but they don't call their churches churches. They call them Kirks. What? K-I-R-K-S, as in captain. Huh. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, this is fascinating, and uh, that's a lie. The Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh has the biggest collection of rhododendrons in the world, or I should say selection. All right. Collections. Fascinating. That's everything you ever wanted to know Brad, about Brad, to answer your question, yes, more. yes, they do. <laughs> they, they do have gentlemen. Have clubs. you been there, Jake? I have not, but I, 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 Google tells me they do. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'm just wondering how much to tip. That's that's my oh, question. Yeah. Before I go, oh, no these question. are essential questions travelers need to know about. By the way, it is now time for another commercial, and once again, I, uh, it sounds very um, selfish, but we're trying to make some money here, so we got another commercial from uh, uh, Fern Facker. Fracker, is it Fracker? Hello, oh, there she I'm is. Fern Fracker of Fern Fracker's Button Barn at the FFBB. I've got. Billions of buttons of all sizes, shapes, and religious affiliations. Round buttons, square buttons, airplane-shaped buttons, flower-shaped buttons. No belly buttons. I can match, mismatch, or completely blend with any apparel ever created or imagined. Whether you want your shirt, blouse, dress, or cape to scream, Hey, look at me! Or move along, nothing to see here. You will want to visit Fern Facker's Button Barn. Give me a call at 936-555-FERN. Oh, Thank you. Right. Fern, uh, Jake, I didn't see Fern when she came in yesterday. Did she look decent to you? I mean, uh, it looks sane? Uh, yeah, no, much more beautiful than you. Oh, uh, I, I was much more pleasant well, sight to, to look I am. at. That's a simple statement. Now, you know, uh, it, it, I mean, that Texas star behind you looks... You, <laughs> do, y'all get, do y'all get a sense that uh, I'm not uh, paying Jake anything for... <laughs> he's an intern, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when we had our show and I would make fun of you, yeah. you'd get upset and mad and take it... Here, every single person is making fun, and you're just rolling with it. You in know, case you're helping me. I'm working on it. Uh, no, I, the times I roll with you, and let me say, this is something new for Jake. It hasn't been this bad, and I, I, I think it's just because Brad's here. It's because it's Brad's here. It is. Yeah, <laughs> sheesh. He's a bad influence on it me. Is Absolutely. Somebody is an influence. Okay, uh, now. Uh, uh, yo, oh, okay. What, Brad? Do you have it? nothing? All right. We got two minutes. Oh, okay, that's Before cool. the break. We've got some interesting facts, and I wanted to say something about outer space before we leave to our next break. One thing I've always wanted on this show is to promote education 
intelligence uh, among many people, and uh, Brad seems to miss that because in school you must have been horrid bull to teachers. You know, we start talking. Oh, by the way, the reason this uh, the you know photosynthesis develops in a that kind of stuff. But here, I, I'm. It's a select audience out there, Bradford. And here's some information that will yeah. help you a bunch. <laughs> Do you know if you fall into a black hole, Bradford? I didn't know this. Uh, but And I don't know how anybody knows it. But they say, you know, I thought you'd be squished like everything. Stretched. Brad, you knew that? You of course I knew that. Stretched like spaghetti. I paid attention in physics class, Mark. Wow. Boy, I didn't even know that in, in physics class or anything else. The other thing I did not know about uh, consider them a black holes was I always thought a black hole sucked you in. You know, like the Starship Enterprise is going, oh, my gosh, it's a black hole, uh, and it can't get out. Oh, come here. But they don't. You fall in a black hole. It's there. It's like, oh, I'm falling into. It's not doing anything like that. But anything that goes in does not come out. And I that know we know true. of. That we know of, except this. Radiation. Isn't that weird? Light does not come out. And yet there is radiation that uh, they register coming out of a black hole, which makes me wonder, how the Sam Hill do they know that? That they, Oh, I, register, I see radiation on the screen wherever that black hole is, and I can see nothing there, but I'm assuming radiation is there. Just irritates daylights out of me how people know these things. More facts to come, ladies and gentlemen, maybe a commercial or two after this break. We need more traffic and news, by the way, uh, weather. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Ah, uh, hello, Long Chu from Long Chu House of Pies and First Class Pest Control. We have new special, dandelion pie. You want to come for dandelion pie, you better come early, because you know what happens to dandelion. Poof, they fly away. Long Chu House of Pies and First Class Pest Control. The first name in House of Pies and First Class Pest Control. Thank you. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was, <clears throat> seemed like our eighth caller, uh, and he was <laughs> trying to deliver us something that we didn't order. I don't know, but anyway, I, I thought it'd be best to contact him, see if he could give us some money for commercial, because we were advertising him anyway. Anyway, just absolutely fascinating. Uh, but not nearly as fascinating as some of these facts, ladies and gentlemen. I know there's local news all over the place, Brad, but you don't get stuff like this. And uh, what you don't get is the fact that <clears throat> many people know, I know Jake does and you know, that the um, international language of flight is uh, English. Any commercial, commercial jet from any country in the world, the pilots must speak English, be able to speak English. And I don't know how you could make the French do that, or the French Canadians, oh my gosh, to recognize, oh, the official flight language, they are so proud of their language, and, and it is a beautiful language, it's one of the Romantic languages, Kay, but, um, you know, and, and you've got one of the provinces in uh, Canada that won't even, you know, all their signs and all, for the most part, are in French, because they rebel against uh English. I thought that was fascinating, but that's not one of the most fascinating. I, Black I, I Sabbath. Have, I had some, some Conroe news. Okay, no, that's Conroe. Let's go. I'm sorry, darling. Yes, Conroe news. Let's hear and it. And I'm sure it's true because I saw it on the internet. Oh, yeah. And that is that Adam Sadler, the comedian Adam actor, Sandler. was driving through Conroe going north in a rent car, and his rent car broke down, and he said uh, that uh, people started pulling over, didn't didn't rec nobody ever recognized him this day and then you know they uh he said well i'm calling you know i'm calling to get some help and and one of the guys said well my my brother-in-law owns a record company so he'll come get your he'll come get your car and, and tow it in for you and then they they took him into town and and beat the hell out of him beat oh, the so they daylight took so. bought him some lunch and uh, anyway, took care of him anyway. He said he didn't know places like this existed. So it's good to get Conroe uh, in some, right. some 
positive now, stuff. Now, we have not uh, vetted that. Uh, no, I haven't. But, but it, it was on the internet. It, it's true. It's true. It's true. The, there was major news sources that reported this. Wow. You know, uh, one of my, and it means nothing, uh, no, I don't mean an insult here, but Adam Sandler, I really don't care for him as an acting person. I, you know, I agree 100%. I don't understand what makes him so funny and why people are investing millions of dollars to go to, to produce his films or, you know, 10 bucks to go see it. I don't think he's funny. I don't. And name a movie that... Name a movie that was um, did well. I, well, if it did well, it did well because well, he, he's got a repertory company of his buddies, okay. David Spade and, and oh yeah, well, and I, King and of Queens. Like and his his earlier work was was better, and it was not he wasn't the name yet. And once he became the name, that's when he went kind of downhill. But but I didn't think he was funny on Saturday Night Live. I, I you know you not know that, that I watch it that often, but that voice know. he does as a kid or whatever it is where he talks. Silly, I can't, in every movie. He and does. the whole Hanukkah, th the song, yeah, you know, Hanukkah, anyway. not, fu not funny. But other than that, I'm glad the people. Bill Murray about. is funny. Bill Murray's funny. Yeah. He's, I don't know I'd, if I'd like to have him over the house to, you know, talk and stuff. I doubt he'd come over. over the house. So I think you're, <laughs> I think you're safe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, speaking of that and people being nice, when Kay and I were uh, living in Huntsville, we lived in Conroe first, but then we went to Huntsville. I was, uh, that's when I changed, uh, uh, I quit my job as a forester and went to college and Kay worked her buns is, off. Is that why you were up at Huntsville State Penitentiary? That was, Kay worked there. I, I did, did you really? I was in prison for four years. Kay's <laughs> first job. Did you have one of those hats, those little flat hats like Smokey the Bear? <laughs> oh, I did. I mean, I, I had it myself. But Do we have it, pictures of this? No. Uh, I've got they some didn't pictures give it of him me. as a forester. Yeah, that was one of my own hats. Hat. But yeah, I had the Texas Forest Service hat and the badge and the truck with the symbols. It was really very fascinating. But I didn't want to mention that. When I was at college, Kay and I were coming home, and it's around New Waverly, the New Waverly exit. We were coming in our 1970 uh, Pontiac. It was beautiful. Pontiac it, uh, uh, Le Mans. Yeah, Le Mans. It was Ooh, a our first yellow. car. It was very nice. Anyway, it just started going ape crud on us, uh, and it overheated or something, I don't remember, and I had to pull over, and we're sitting there, you know, this is before cell phones or anything, and this guy, who was headed north on I-45 in the other direction, he saw us, and he came to the next exit, and turned around, and pulled up, and said, uh, hey, can I help you anything, and... <laughs> I just told him, I don't know, I, I've got some friends, but I can't call him. And said, tell you what, I'm going to take you over to the uh, Waverly House, and uh, y'all can call there, and if you need any help. I'll... It was just, and we were just normal people standing out by our car. And the people coming our direction, you know, didn't stop, but I was on the feeder, and I don't. Now, the Waverly like, House, is that, like, mentally challenged? It was uh, uh, not really. It's a, a cafe that is very good. Uh, Jake, have yeah. you been to the Waverly House? It's very nice. I have not, no. Okay. Had a if you want to get explode on me there some good great. homemade pie, you can go to the Waverly House. Brad, if you ever have a jar of ketchup, a lot of times it's in the squirt bottle now, but if you get a jar of ketchup and you notice there's a glob of ketchup at the top, there's yeah. a separated part. Uh, yeah. I was in my suit. It was a forestry meeting with the director and everybody, and I grabbed the ketchup, and I didn't pay any attention to it. The sports jacket I had on was white, and I just went, and it went, boom, and just... Looked like you've been shot. I was covered with ketchup, and I just, you, you know, and everybody, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. Anyway, it's a pretty much story of my life, but that was fascinating. And there are nice people in this county, and there are some people who are very angry uh, in this county also, and um, I guess that's true everywhere. But, I uh, get mad sometimes. Okay, you never do. You know, Kay, we have never had, and this is for everyone in uh, Brad's getting ready to go to sleep, we've never had an argument. Uh, we've... We've never yelled at one another, and the deal is I can read her like I'll get out, and whenever she does get upset, instead of saying things, she just ignores me. And it's a sulk more or less, but it's uh, one of these senses that if I open my mouth, it's not going to be anything good, so I think I'll just go with it. That's a I, lot like this show. Yeah. Yeah, right. Did I that? I am so not going to be missed. Anyway, it was, uh, it's, uh, anyway, that's uh, something really uh, interesting. I but Mark has also found out when he spews, that doesn't get him anywhere either. Exactly. So. By the way, it's, i uh, got another commercial here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, uh, well, I'll let the guy tell you himself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Glazer's Beans uh, Donut Dogs with Chili Glaze. Each wiener is inserted into four glazed uh, filled donuts. Comes with a honey relish dipping sauce. Each donut dog costs, uh, comes with a wet 
uh, towel attached. The, it's the best donut dog in the galaxy, and it is right here at Doug Bean's Donut Dog. And uh, Donut Dog accepts any and all uh, coupons from other chains that serve donut dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, Glazer Beans. Next. <laughs> anyway. Oh, there you go. That You know, a donut dog. And I'm wondering why nobody's ever invented them before. I mean, it just goes, uh, you see a donut, the thought is, what if you had a line of them and you put a wiener in the middle of it? It's just, to me, fascinating. I, I think you also need a sign in the studio here to tell us when to laugh, you know. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, not like that Fu uh, Chu guy. Uh, that was, I was just laughing my buns off. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that was really great. Uh, yes. Okay. Whoa. I don't know what that means, but yes. Right. Okay. Um, other things, Brad, I want to tell you this because it's very important. I think it's a, one of our good last uh, things to go in, and we'll continue it after the yeah. break in a little bit. But right now, it has to do with... Um, Facts about people's characters, how you can determine a person's character and what is related to someone having a fine character. And it's got stuff like, uh, um, oh, you know, uh, doing things that scare you will make you happier, will give you a better sense of character if you do that. So if it's scary, if you're afraid of doing it. That's why people that go on, on Bear grills yeah. out to the wilderness. Exactly. Bear scared. grills. Yeah. What's you that? don't know Bear Grylls? Never heard of Jake him. Who's that? He's a, he's oh a British guy that is kind of like a former... Oh, he's a survivalist? The, he, he's the fake survivalist. Stays well, in a hotel and then goes out and pretends oh, to do stuff. No, I don't think no? he's fake. He, he's, not, he's not the fake one. The other one, I, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He's the one who got busted for, yeah, never actually sleeping. This guy was, uh, yeah, he worked for the a British... Brett or whatever they call him. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was like special forces. Yeah, with they're, the they're Navy SEALs, whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, he, he during the summer they have a show called Running Wild with Bear Grylls and they get celebrities to go out and it's only a one night thing, but they they go out torment them. And bit. and yeah, and Bear always wants them to at least taste something that he's found like, you know, some roadkill or last year they found a frozen uh, raccoon. And uh, they cut up and ate. Who was that with? The uh, black actor? Julia Roberts. Well, Julia Roberts, he led her across a bridge that was. Oh, anyway. no, that was a different one. That was a goat head. Oh, my gosh. With Julia Roberts. It, have you seen Alaskan Bush People? I, uh, I, I love I that have. show. Oh, I love yeah. that show. It's so I fake, but I love it too. <laughs> It, it, it's a guy and his wife that live in the, the wilderness of Alaska with their seven children. And they have Do like they a one clothes? room. Huh? Do they wear clothes? Occasionally. What's that show? Uh, Naked? Naked and Afraid. Another oh, great one. Another great one. <laughs> I yes. haven't seen that. No, it's uh, good. You should watch that. Folks, uh, when we come back from this uh, break, we're getting ready to go on. We probably won't be talking about Naked and Afraid, but we may continue that. And uh, also, we're going to have another special commercial. Back a, in a couple of minutes. A guest. Oh, and a guest. Okay, we'll save that guest for after the commercial. Back in a couple, ladies and gentlemen. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Moving experience. This is Marv talking to you. Across the street, around the corner, and beyond. If you need out of there, consider yourself gone. No appliance or furniture too large or doorways too small. We'll carry, drag, and or push anything you've got through any space available. No insurance? Don't worry. We don't have any either. <laughs> what we do have is Marv, Matt, Melvin, and uh, that other guy. Give us a call at 936-555-GONE and we'll have three pickups and a riding more at your residence quicker than you can say Marv, Matt, Melvin, and uh, that other guy's moving experience. And thank you for that commercial from the mover dudes. Oh, man, that Marv guy. I got some big yeah, bucks I got for this case. 750 Can you believe it? Yeah. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty you, good. Know, you, you know, honey, we've got a special guest uh, in the studio oh gosh, that sure just do. came oh in God. and we've... we've Talked to him a couple of times on the show. It's it's Anthony Thin Mints Russo, and and I've been wanting to ask you, what's the Thin Mints all about? Well, thank you, Kay. Uh, you know, 
You know, uh, there was an unfortunate incident uh, involving the Girl Scout organization. It's uh, probably best we don't go into the details of that. Just, just uh, you can call me Mr. Russo. That'd well, be fine. All right, all yeah. right. Well, my imagination can just take it from there. Your imagination doesn't even come close, I assure you. <laughs> Listen, I just wanted to stop by and let you know that as a special envoy from New Jersey, we are here to present a certificate of merit to, to the people of Montgomery County, and we're happy to do that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Tony, that is... Wow, that's well, beautiful. Well, you know, a lot of your elected officials are under indictment and uh, oh. being prosecuted and considered for prosecution under a lot of crimes. It's You're following in the footsteps of New Jersey, the proud, the proud footsteps of New Jersey, where our elected officials are subjected to incarceration on a regular basis. And uh, we just want to wish you the best to you and all of the people of Montgomery County, although you are leaving town. So that's right. We... Uh, we, we, we're going to be checking in on you. But anyway. Tony, I didn't know your arm reached as far as Washington State. Yeah, we, we, we have our fingers in a lot of pies. We do. Tony a lot of pies. Tony and I have uh, <laughs> uh, got to Even dandelion pie. Well, you yeah. know, you never know when you're going to yeah. get your next meal. You know, uh, anyway, listen, it's been a pleasure. I, I wish you guys Godspeed in the future. And uh, see you around. You bet. Okay, uh, uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, this guy's got one of those uh, twice-barrel pistols. I've never seen anything like it. Twice-barrel handgun, uh, huh? Double-barrel pistol. Yeah. And he's got uh, one with the the bullet. I mean, you know, the chamber where the thing uh -huh. is? It's huge. It's long. I don't know. I forget what it's called, but it's massive. Anyway, but it uh, used to scare me. But now that we're moving, I is really, I don't know if he's got any business up there. By the way, speaking of bad uh, cities, Pasadena. I wish you would read the front page of the Courier. Pasadena, other, Texas. We're Pasadena, talking Texas. Here, people yeah. on the other uh, side of Houston. First page of the Chronicle today about holy cow, those people are. What happened? I didn't read well, it. Well, it's just that they're uh, mayor, and for forever, uh, not forever, but for a long time, the uh, they've got the district. It's mostly uh, Mexican, uh, Latinos, all in the area, and yet. That's know, all, the all but one of the, uh, I think, uh, city councilmen is uh, Mexican because they have gerrymandered the crap out of that uh, place. And they have also got it to where, you know, you have at-large council seats. So they've got one, you know, where it's mostly Hispanic and they say, okay, y'all get to vote. But the other, you know, councilmen for the most part are going to be at-large where the whole town votes. And uh, it's mostly, I don't know anyway, how they do the, it. What, what's the problem? I don't the, understand. The, I don't know. But if the, you want to know what's happening to the money in Pasadena, Texas, you've got to pay $90 to even get a, uh, I mean, if you're a normal citizen or whatever, $90 to get uh, the uh, minutes of what they were talking about. Well, How much money idea. is being paid for this street, we are not going to tell you. Uh, everything's shut and closed, and uh, there's no mention. And, um, yeah, there's I know, no and there's no transparency. There's that, no transparency. That, you know, that word that just gets used well, so much in politics. You know, I think you should take a, a page from that, that playbook. And, and, you know, people who want to know what this show is really like can buy Mark's four or five pages of, of typewritten notes for $90. Yeah. You know, you that know, would be great. Right. We uh, Brad and I had a show for, oh, gosh, I don't know how bra uh, long, Brad. And we also did a bunch of... Uh, uh, restaurant, restaurant review reviews. things that I thought were, were pretty good. Some of them were really good. Some yeah. of them sucked pond water. And a yeah. lot of them are still, you know, on the YouTube. About 100 of them. Today. But this is what I would come into each show, you know, like this, and uh, Brad would show up and uh, he might have a little, well, I never saw a tablet. He'd just sitting there talking and playing. He brought a tablet today. Saying bad stuff about me and just hey, yeah, having a, a great page time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, as normal, though, I've got to at least have something to fall back on. And there's. Um, but so you're, much funnier, stuff. you're funnier when you're not reading, when you're just going off the cuff. That's when you're at your best. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, I don't know, Brad, but here's one thing that really I believe people would be less if they did not know this, Brad. And that is it considers the nation that is the world's largest producer of false teeth. What? Lichtenstein. Ladies and gentlemen, Lichtenstein is the world's largest producer of false teeth. They've got a population of 40,000, and yet they're responsible for 60 million false is teeth. Is that a real country? That's a real country. Lichtenstein's in uh, Europe it's, over there by the, uh, yeah. It sounds mildly pornographic. Lichtenstein? Lichtenstein. See, sounds like where they did. Right. I, I never thought of that. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever seen the movie right, yeah. uh, The Knight's Tale? That's where he's from. He's from Lichtenstein. 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 Yeah. Anyway, can you believe that? 60 million like that false movie. teeth. I don't know if that's a year, but one-fifth of all your false teeth, there's a good chance they, uh, 
one fifth of all the false teeth come from Liechtenstein. One other thing I did not know was uh, Gallup Poll did this. I didn't even know Gallup Poll was interested in things like this, but Gallup Poll found uh, the uh, c one country that is the least religious country in the <coughs> entire world, and I would have thought North Korea, uh, but it's um, they wouldn't Estonia. let them in North Korea. I'm sorry, so. it's Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Estonia's over there. It's north in Europe. It's close to Poland, between uh, Russia and Poland, and uh, Estonia, and that they're just. Not and you want me to to move there? Well, Brad, I don't know why you wouldn't feel a, a you know a, a tug or a, you know affection for that a um, kinship. Something else, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you may not know it. Brad is probably the only one in this room that knows this. Blad, Black Sabbaths, heavy metal band. Sure. Their original name. Black Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, I do not know. That's it. How did? No, it's Polka Turk Polka Talk Blues Band. Polka Talk Blues Band. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Ozzy yeah. Osbourne get... was in a polka band. I can't believe it either. No, no, no. Yeah, polka, P O L K A. That that that's hard to believe. And this is for my darling Kay. We've got one more commercial we got to do. Uh, uh, Kay, here's the uh, another thing. The word ushers, U S H E R S, is one of the few words. It, actually, it's the only word of that size that uh, has uh, five personal pronouns in it. Ushers. What? It's got us. If you look at ushers, us. She, he, her, and hers are all there. Five personal pronouns. Somebody sat up late one night to figure that out, huh? Yeah. Okay, we got to get a few more bucks in right here. And okay. So I'm going to go ahead and... We, uh, yeah, we need some traveling money. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, go ahead. It's Ethel's half price colonoscopies. Uh, why pay a lot of money when Ethel Limpid can deliver the goods for half the price? No insurance? Don't worry. They wouldn't even pay if you had it. The procedure is carried out at Ethel's Kitchen with a French press and other gizmos you don't even want to know about. All you need to know is the price. It's half. Forget the Yellow Pages, Angie's List, and the Internet. Just call Ethel at 281-555. Whoa! She'll be on top of you before you can say, Boy, that's cold. Ethel's half price colonoscopy. That sounds like what our, our old friend Wayman went through. A it, bit. Uh, it does. But yeah, and that's very coincidental. That yeah. was strictly coincidental. A anyway, pro-state exam. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> uh, Brad, I also wanted to mention this to you, and this is probably uh, um, explains a lot about me. The smarter the person is, the faster he thinks, and the sloppier his handwriting. I have got the worst handwriting in the world. Well, that would imply that you think fast. Yeah, that's a, the other thing it would imply. And see, I'm thinking so fast, I'm thinking beyond what I'm writing, and it's... No, I did that, and there's a, a big story about you know, it that I won't share with you. You know, honey, I'm changing the subject here. Okay, we just left colonoscopies, and you want to leave I know. That? Can you believe I, I want to change the subject? Yeah. Uh, we got the opportunity to go over to Brad's a few days ago, sure and, and he, you are quite the uh, handyman. I didn't know you had all the skill with woodworking, and you, you well, did, I'm, did I'm some not sure. plumbing. I'm, and not, I'm not sure skill is the appropriate appropriate word, but yeah, I like to noodle around in the backyard with tools. Well, he built a really nice outdoor kitchen out of some reclaimed wood and... Turned looks, out pretty looks, darn good, didn't it? It looks good. I'm surprised. It looks very good. So, anyway, uh, we're just waiting for the invite. You know. Is there any wonder why uh, Brad likes Kay best? I, I just don't... <laughs> She's a sweetheart. It. She's a sweetheart. What's he's doing with you? I don't know. You know, if you were still in, in that Sam Houston State uh, forestry uniform, yeah, I you know a man in uniform strikes a you know a pretty good uh, good good pose, but <sighs> yeah, you gave up the uniform. I did. By the way, it wasn't Sam Houston State; it was Texas Forest Service. But uh, when I left, went to Sam Houston State. And by the way, speaking of leaving, we're going to have to do that, ladies and gentlemen. This is hanging with haters. It's the end of us, Brad, for at least five months. I don't know what happens after the end that, of Brad. an era. Do you come? Are you going to come back? We're and, coming uh, back. Resume the show. Yeah, we, I doubt when we come back that there will even be a place open. Uh, this uh, we have uh, to Lone see. Star Community Radio is taking off, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of shows out there, but it's been a pleasure. For Canada all the here. best to all of our listeners. Jake, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I uh, wish I got to work. Work with all y'all longer, but boy, it would it would have been a hoot. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hang with haters, Mark and Kate Bradley. Thank you so much for showing up and thank you. carrying us on throughout the uh, year and plus a few months. I'll catch you later, ladies and gentlemen. Catch me on the Courier and the Woodlands Villager weekly. Later. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. 
If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas, at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.